I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn how to find probability of mutually exclusive or non mutually exclusive events. So we have a set of question here. So we are going to roll two dice, right? So the question is to roll two dice. Let me roll two dice and then we'll figure the question out. It is two dice are rolled. What is the probability that you roll either an eight or double? And the second question is the sum is six or eight. So there are two questions for you. So when you roll a die, you could get eight or double or the sum is six or eight. So there are two different questions, right? So we'll say this is for us question number 2a or let's say 1a and this is question number 1b. So we are rolling two dice. So, so that is two. Let's say one is big, the other one is small. I'm giving you time to pause the video, answer the question, right? So, and then I'll provide you with, with a solution, okay? So I just kind of made it on this side, okay? That's fine. So this one is a big die, we have a small die, but they're standard. We have numbers from uh, one to six on both, right? So so that, that is how the, these dies are. Now what we need to do is answer these questions. The first one is you roll either an eight or double. Now what does that mean? You roll either eight or double. Mm -hmm. Basically it means that uh, double means same numbers on both the dies. That is to say double is kind of this one one, two two, three three, uh, 4 4 we could have 5 5 we could also have 6 6 that is double right so so I think now you understand the question two dice are rolled what is the probability that you roll either an 8 or double so these are all the combinations so when we are talking about this we're trying to add right these two numbers on the dice and when we add we are looking for favorable cases when you get an 8 or double, right? You will notice here that 4 plus 4 is also 8, right? 4 plus 4 is equals to 8. Since 4 plus 4 is 8, then will I call this event as mutually exclusive? Well, not, right? So it is not mutually exclusive. So we know this event is not mutually exclusive. Since one of the combination which makes eight is four and four, and that is also a double, right? So this is not a mutually exclusive case. Now to go further, let me kind of uh, sketch and write down all the possible numbers when we add what happens. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, we are going to add, that's the operation, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm not writing coordinates like this. That was for me to explain you actually what these coordinates are or the elements in our set are or in the sample space are. But I'll just add them and write directly. One plus one is two, one plus two is three. So the numbers keep on increasing by one, right? Here we start with three, increase by one. Okay, six, seven, eight. And then we start with four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, how many add up to eight? So let's count them. So these are the numbers which add up to eight. Do you see that? So these are the numbers which add up to eight. And then we have to figure out how many are double, right? So, so doubles are actually along the diagonal. These are the doubles, right? So which I've mentioned clearly here, right? So these are, these are my doubles. So one plus one is two, two plus two is four, three plus three is six, four plus four is eight, five plus five is 10, six plus six is 10. Now, since this is not a mutually exclusive case, will apply the principle of inclusion and exclusion, right? So that is what we're going to apply. And in this particular case, the addition rule for non-mutually exclusive case will be 
probability of event uh, we say event let's call them event a and b right so event a or b will be equals to probability of event a plus probability of event b take away probability of intersection common between event a and b so that's the rule which we are going to apply now a i'm saying is for getting eight so what are the how many ways do you get eight one two three four and five right so that is the favorable number of cases so that is eight over total is six times six 36 correct plus how many times do you get a double so one two three four five six times you get double right so well one two three four five i wrote eight i'm sorry it is five one two three four five correct okay so 5 over 36 is probability of getting 8 probability of getting a double is 6 over 36 correct okay and uh, how many times is it common one time so it is 1 over 36 so that is the result right so when you add them up 5 plus 6 is 11 take away 1 is 10 so we get 10 over 36 which could be simplified as 5 over 18 right so so that is the probability of rolling either an 8 or double so i hope that is absolutely clear now let's look into the second question which is two dice are rolled what is the probability that the sum is 6 or 8 so in this case uh, in this case we are saying probability of getting sum 6 or sum 8 right so these are two different sums and therefore these are uh, mutually exclusive events right so this is what we get six right these are the sixes correct and nothing is common between them so we get five sixes sum right so in that case the answer should be probability of sum six plus probability of sum eight as we can see one two three four five so it is five over total space we have 36 of these right 36 plus for eight also we have five so five over 36 and that gives us 10 over 36 correct which could be simplified as five over 18 right so that is how we can actually answer probability related questions when the events are mutually exclusive or non-mutually exclusive i hope you have understood the concept with this example i'm anil kumar you can always share and subscribe my videos thank you and all the best